$4.6 million. That includes the contingency amount of 4%. It includes all of their bonding and insurance, um, the construction manager fee, which Simon keeps reminding me, we got a heck of a bargain at 5%. Um, the, the level of detail that Moltz has provided and um, the level of uh, scrutiny and uh, uh, effort to cut every cost available um, has been very, very apparent throughout this process. Um, a week ago when they presented the, these numbers to us, um, they presented 60 some items of value engineering ideas that we could go through and figure out what what could be changed, eliminated, modified, revised um, suggestions they had. Some of them were um, right away, there wasn't an option to do them. Sometimes there was an option to, so we took advantage of all of the ones that we could. Um, there's still some uh, that are kind of in the queue right now, if I'm correct, Simon, that uh, there's a couple items that are still pending. Um, the good news that uh, uh, we were fairly excited about was one of the very expensive items with this project was the decommissioning of the existing lagoons once we got things done. Um, originally we had had an estimate of around a half a million dollars for that project and um, once we got it bid out and when Moltz had somebody come in and measure, they actually did a survey on the ponds, they floated the ponds to get the amount of solids that were in the ponds. Um, they came back with a number of $325,000, so that was a huge savings right off the bat. Um, so, so that number is actually in this number. So that would include decommissioning the lagoons right away, doing it as quick as we could, versus leaving them to, um, for lack of a better term, spend a couple of years dehydrating and drying out, and, and then we're still gonna spend a substantial amount of money hauling the solids and dealing with those once it's gone. Um, they're, they're not going to lie to anybody. There are going to be some odors associated with this, no matter which direction we go. But um, with the decommissioning uh, as part of this project, we are going to cut that time frame as short as possible. Um, I don't know exactly what that time frame looks like, <laughs> but uh, um, that it, it, it will um, cut it down uh, from from what it would have been if we had been dehydrating them and, and drying them out over the over a couple of year time frame. Um, the, 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 this one page, uh, this first page from Moltz, um, gives a very concise breakdown of each of the, the projects or portions of this. You can get a good snapshot of exactly um, what we would be spending for each aspect. Um, just a reminder, when the board accepted Moltz's um, CMAR contract, uh, the next nearest one was an 8% fee. So that 5% that Moltz bid this project at covered, the difference between them and the next closest competitor covers almost the entire um, contingency fee that Moltz is comfortable with. Um, because Moltz has been on board since the 30% level, um, they have looked at every aspect of the plans. Simon's probably sick of hearing from John and from uh, Dan down there with different questions or ideas or thoughts or hey what about this and that kind of thing but uh, Moltz was very comfortable with the idea of a four um, percent contingency on this because basically we're going into a, uh, a a field green field that isn't a remodel the only remodel involved in this is the inflow pumping station where we're adding some um, new pumps new piping to meet the state criteria for what we have to have as far as um, being able to, to uh, meet any kind of maximum flows that we would have coming into that lift station. Um, at this point, I'm not sure. Simon, have you got anything else that you think I missed or that you would like to highlight? You know, Dave, I thought that was a, a pretty good summary. I guess I would just highlight that um, the last time I was in front of the board, we were talking about this CMR procedure that we used to get here, and now you're kind of seeing the end results. So, you know, David highlighted that this has been pretty well vetted. Uh, we've, we've kind of 
looked around a lot of corners to try to find some cost savings and um, I have confidence in Moulton Construction and we're able to deliver this project successfully. They've been really great to work with so far and uh, I have full confidence in their abilities to uh, deliver this project. Are there any particular questions that Simon or myself could attempt to answer as far as this cost estimate? Um, one of the things that, uh, I mean, just, just a, a quick highlight of some of the things that Molt pointed out. Um, the, uh, the type of stainless steel bolts that were required for the project. There is a certain grade that you have to use when you're submerged or when you're underground. But Moltz brought up the point that there were some areas where we could um, go with a different grade, a little less expensive bolt above ground where it wasn't under pressure or under, not necessarily under pressure, but it wasn't underground and it wasn't submerged. Um, that savings, I'm trying to find it right here on the sheet right now, and um, I don't want to say that was $2,900, but maybe I'm looking. Yeah, that was, that was a $2,900 savings. That's not a huge, huge savings, but they found five or six different items that added up to $23,000 right off the bat. Um, one of the things that they pointed out that we've actually figured out today was going to work, um, the initial plan was to tie the effluent line back into an existing effluent line, um, but it was in the roadway. But Moltz suggested that we use a portion of the existing chlorine contact chamber, and that was a savings, um, going to be in the savings of between fifty-five and sixty thousand dollars because we don't have to pay for traffic control, we don't have to cut the road, we don't have to flow fill it, we don't have to have the cracks in the road after it's patched back, those types of things. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, Simon. Melissa did say that was a go today, right? It is, yeah, we reviewed the hydraulics on that, and that is a go. So, so that type of thing um, is, is, is how Moltz is working with us, and, and I have every confidence that as we move forward, if they find some other things where we have that ability, they're going to they're gonna do that to, to help us get there as well. So, is this going to be a steel building, a brick building? What kind of building is this going to be? I guess we haven't seen any... Um, or okay. designs of what, what this is going to look like. The, the, uh, I'll take a crack at it and then Simon can help me figure that out. The, uh, uh, the, the influent building where our grit chamber will be located, where our screening will be located and all that is going to be a masonry block building. Uh, the reason for that is uh, obviously that's where we've got the most raw wastewater coming into the facility. And so it's a, a damp, wet environment. We, it, it, all of the electronics and everything I mean, that are inside that will be explosion proof. That's part of why, I mean, some of the things that Bolts did was they suggested a, an outlet or, or a, a light switch on the outside of the building versus inside because outside it doesn't have to be explosion proof. Inside the door it had to be explosion proof. <laughs> you know, those, those types of details that they have gone through. Um, so the, the main building that's going to sit the highest at the highest point because we're going to pump up to it and then we're going to gravity feed through this all the way out to the river. Um, so, so that building will be masonry. The operations building that is going to sit adjacent to the, the, the SBR, both the digester and the, the sequencing batch tanks, will be a pre-engineered metal building. We're going to coordinate the colors and the the type of uh, um, the color scheme and the the two tone of the building, kind of earthy tones, that kind of thing. The metal building is actually going to be a stucco finish, um, so it's not going to look like metal. Uh, but the panels come in with the stucco finish already on them, um, and then the same thing for the UV building on the north end of the project. It will be a pre-engineered metal building as well. Is it is building to be like what two stories high type? Or? Um, the 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 main ops building <coughs> will be at the same level. A part of the foundation of the ops building is actually the digester wall. Is that correct, Simon? That's correct. Okay, right. so it will sit at grade level at where the top of the tanks are. 
So that's, and that'll be a single story building there. And then the, the UV building will actually sit kind of below grade on the back side. It, the roof will be above grade of the tanks, but the rest of the building will be below grade because as we flow down through the system, the, the, the UV is the last portion where we, where we um, finalize the treatment before everything is it, it left to go to the river at that point. So. And that first building that goes into this will be the highest elevation? It will be correct. So it looks like Simon's presenting. Okay. Thank yeah. You, Simon. Thank you, Simon. So yeah, sure. I just got on everything David said there was accurate. These this is the uh, these are the two SBR trains you're seeing here. And this is the operations building that David's referred to. Um, single, excuse me. Now of course I wouldn't get that. Um, 15 and a half feet from uh, finished grade to the top of the gable roof on that operations building. And do you, can you grab the Headworks building for me, Simon? And if you can. So this is your Headworks building. Uh, you know, as David mentioned, it's, it's worth if you get some cost savings with the engineer metal building, it's pretty common to use that for you know operations buildings where you have office facing control panels. In the headworks, you have a higher concentration of hydrogen sulfide from the raw wastewater, um, and so those pre engineer metal buildings just don't hold up over time. So that's where you're going with the masonry building for the headworks, which is what you're seeing here. So. Uh, this is just a 3D of the building, your finished floors where these site pads are. And uh, what you're seeing down below grade here is the grit chamber, which is what removes particulates from the raw wastewater, such as uh, you know rice and eggshells and the coffee grounds. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. So overall, the site has three physical structures that are above grade. <clears throat> Simon, can you can you throw a site plan up there that's got the buildings and the basins on it too, please? I wasn't smart enough to have all that ready to go. I apologize. I was oh, you're good. So this is a uh, grading and drainage plan. So uh, you know we're we're still on the Headworks building. I don't know if. Okay. It's there you go. I am there you go. From a server in in Denver. <laughs> uh, So I'm, I'm gonna grab the screen, or just show people on the screen now, Simon. Um, yep. So our existing influent pump station is right here, off of Stripple Boulevard. <laughs> so Rogers Farm is over here to the west. So our existing road, for those of you that have been out to cleanup days, this is the bay that we have used for cleanup days for years. So um, there'll be a new entrance coming off of 32 and a half on the north side of the project. Um, uh, I don't remember 100 and some feet back or 80 some feet back where we've got a, uh, um, a cattle guard type tracking pad so that we're not and then it will be uh, concrete up here and then we're going to have some recycled asphalt or uh, maybe even it's called out as asphalt up to that point I don't remember. Um, so we, we're putting the gate back far enough that the trucks can pull in when they need to and be off the road while they unlock or lock the gate as they're coming or going to the site. Um, and then yeah, the, the building is gonna, the influent building, so the new pumps will push everything up to the influent building right here. Then everything will gravity over to the basins. Our new ops building will be right here. This is the digester. This is the EQ basin, and then right down here on this end is the uh, UV building. So, and then it'll push out and go over to the end, the north end of the existing chlorine contact chamber. That'll be retrofitted as a manhole, as a, a as the final point on the site before it goes out to uh, goes into the pipe all the way over to the river. So, so it's not going to flow through that that green. There or the it won't go through the wetlands anyway. Once, once, once we um, decommission the two the primary ponds, then the wetlands will come offline as well. Um, so 
you know, at, at, at this point, what we have done is the SBR system is uh, completely modular. So when we have enough growth in town and we need to increase the size of the facility, we can literally put a second set of this right next door and double this, the capacity. So I know we probably given them these numbers before, but what what percentage of the capacity will we be at given our current level? A great question, Mike. Um, and it, 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 we are running between 40 and 45 percent right now. And our new permit is exactly the same as our current permit. That saved us a couple of steps with the state health department because we weren't re-rating the plant. We weren't re-rating and trying to go for larger or more capacity. And according to our 20-year growth plan, we should only will be at the 60 to 70 percent unless we hit a major growth spurt. So. Um, in the 20 year time frame. So right now, we'll be firing the plant up right around 40%. Do they have some type of requirement when you get a certain capacity or a certain percentage of your capacity that you have to have a plan? Yes. In phase two? Plan? Correct. Um, and that number is 80%. When you hit the 80% number, you have to be starting design and it's, is it 90 or 95 percent, Simon, that you have to be under construction? You know, I think 90 percent, they say they want your permit secured, and 95 percent is after construction. Okay. So, and, and currently we're between 38 and 41 percent, depending on the month. So none of this was facilitated by either our, our, our hydraulic load or our organic load. It was facilitated by the fact that the, the lagoons would no longer meet the new guidelines. So, so uh, is there going to be a turn on? We'll shut this off. Turn this on, or is there going to be a gradual flow to the new system? I I believe gradual. The question, Simon, is is how quickly will we be turning the valve and going from one to the other? It will be somewhat gradual, won't it, as we start to feed the biomass and start to get things perking and working? Yeah, commonly uh, what we'll do is we'll actually truck in what we just referred to as seed sludge, because um, this, is, this is considered an extended aeration activated sludge. So uh, it takes months to grow the right bug. So we would truck in some of the bugs that have already been populated from other plants. And then, yeah, you can start hitting it um, with full flow, but it'll take roughly, I mean, if you don't have the bugs, it'll take two to three months to grow the right population of bacteria that are necessary for the full level of treatment. You truck in the bugs, you can usually trim that down to say four to six weeks. So yeah, it's, it's certainly a process. It's, it's you know, um, it's a biological process um, that needs to be turned on in the time period of a few months in order to hit your full treatment goals. Okay. And we're, we're planning in about a 14 month construction, so that would put us um, somewhere July, August of 2022. The construction will be complete and we can begin the process, putting the seed bugs in and starting to um, treat. And then the goal is that gives us a four to five month window to meet the, the December 31st, 2022 deadline that we've got to be meeting the new um, permit. So that was factored into the construction process with this. So. And then at that point, the decommissioning of two existing lagoons could begin. Correct. Once we're up and running, then um, we'll work with the vendor and Moltz will work with the vendor to decommission the lagoons. But part of the process, and didn't John say they needed 90 days, Simon? Um, That's correct. Okay, so they, they're anticipating um, pumping 
enough flow out or enough liquid and and working to, to feed what's in the existing ponds through the new pond, but it's going to take about nine or through the new plant, it's going to take about 90 days with the amount of volume that's in those ponds to do that, to feed that through, and then they'll go in and do the rest of the solids removal once once those have been decanted. So so, so literally, the decommissioning option is an option where David and I recommend that we, we keep that in this cost estimate and part of our agreement to decommission those reviews once the new facility is online. Um, because, like David said, in the end, if we don't, we do, we do the natural dry two year process. It's still going to cost us probably a couple hundred thousand dollars at that time to hold it off. So, it makes more financial sense. To do it now, get it over with. Get it over with. And one I want to bring up is we had initially budgeted what about a hundred thousand plus for Excel to upgrade our electrical system at the facility, mm -hmm. and they are doing that at no cost to the town. Correct. Oh, wow. So that was a huge savings from Excel Energy. Yeah. And so they're and they have shown with the new power. Power's going to come in off the new engine system. It it will be in um, it. It'll end up. Oh, you're going to change it on me. Thank you. Well, so I could show you the actual electrical site plan. Perfect. Probably more detail than you need, but it'll take. Give me a second. I'll be able to find it. Is that underground, David, or overhead? It, it will be underground. Underground, no poles. So um, the only pole will be on the north side of 32 and a half, um, and then they'll be bringing it in. You can see coming down, kind of outside the berm. And then our uh, the new transformer will sit right here, and the new generator will sit right here. So the on sorry Nick no, the the so the headworks building's over here, the ops building is here, and kind of in between in that island is where the 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 new transformer will be, and the new generator. Now the generator right now the existing lift station. Influent pumping station has its own generator and transfer switch. We have to haul um, a generator out here when 32 and a half, like at 3.30 this morning when we lost power. Um, we had crews, most of you didn't even know, you could still flush your toilet and, you know, thank you Mr. Novotny last night. But um, the, uh, uh, we have to haul a portable generator out there. Part of our plan right now is to leave a handhold right here at this end of the project so that because we were trying to trim costs and make sure that we didn't overspend what what we had because we were trying to do the best we could for the community we're leaving a handhold at the north end of the project so at a later date we can run power over and this generator is sized to run that lift station and deal with that it will be running the new inflow pumping station so we'll have that generator and transfer switch that we can take either to the public workshop to another lift station elsewhere in town that discussion will be had um, but we did oversize the transformer and the the generator enough and they're leaving enough room in the electrical panels inside the the, the office area there to run that 32 and a half lift station um, both with the generator and the transformer eventually so if we get you know towards the end of this project and somehow some way we had funds left over that would be something we could consider but at this point it is not in plan so and explain to the board what type of generator we're required to have and why <laughs> so um Two, two reasons. Uh, they, they, we, we will have an on site diesel power generator. Um, number one, it's about $33,000 less expensive than a natural gas one of that size. But the natural gas, you can't have a utility like wastewater dependent on another utility like natural gas that could potentially be dependent on power to supply the natural gas. To run the generator that's supposed to be taking care of the wastewater treatment facility when the power goes out so we will have an on-site diesel diesel <coughs> generator that will be there so 
besides the fact there's another 33,000, so it was going to be on site diesel anyway because we were <laughs> trimming everything we could. So, and those wetlands will eventually be dried out and just for future expansion or whatever that we may need? Correct. The, the existing wetlands were man made wetlands, they're not a protected wetlands in any way. Um, so as they will just deteriorate on their own as the, the feed, we're no longer feeding the wetlands any longer, um, they will go away. I'm, I'm fully anticipating that once they go away and, and we start, that that will be potentially our other, until we have to expand, that would be our cleanup day site and some of our miscellaneous storage and that kind of thing potentially. Because I don't ever see getting rid of any of the north end of this site, it's always going to be wastewater. Now, what, and that's a discussion not for tonight, but what happens after the ponds are decommissioned and those are available, we, that's a discussion for another time to figure out exactly what and where, how does that get used for the best, best use for the town. Um, but this site needs to stay wastewater forever because eventually we're going to grow enough that we'll probably need to build at least an addition onto this plant and that kind of thing. So, what did I miss? That pretty much covers the main points. I mean, on the cost estimate, you can see the three big costs are right there in front of you with the site work, the concrete, which is kind of scary about the concrete price, and then uh, mm -hmm. obviously the equipment. Yeah, concrete costs more than equipment. Yeah. Have you three in the uh, peanut gallery? Do you guys have this information? <coughs> no, uh, just the agenda, not that. Just the agenda. Not the specific. Um, we can probably put this on our website for access. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, I don't you can go to oh, it already is. Already is. Yeah. yeah, you can just go to the board packets. Okay. okay. So I think Dave and Simon and Holtz, I don't participate there in those meetings, and they still have weekly meetings to discuss the project. Uh, I'm a bottom line kind of guy. I just wonder what costs. I don't really. I'm not operating this facility. That's David's job. So, but uh, I do know from conversations offline with David that they have looked at a lot of ways to uh, cut the cost. I think Simon and David have been both been impressed with Moltz and their approach. Um, it's obvious they they're going to take a lot of pride in what they do for kind of level. You know, it's their. You know, it's her company and it's her reputation, so I'm, I'm, I've been pleased with that. Not that the other companies won't either, but the, uh, like David indicated, the 5% manager fee, that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, years ago, when, when this first came up, Steve Bavaris, our previous town engineer, indicated you probably 8 or 10%, and we are talking about that, so I'm good with that. So. If I look back, you know, at that 2010, 2011, Utilities say that we did, and we looked at moving lagoons three miles north and adding, we're looking at joining with St. Rain Sand. These costs aren't tremendously higher than they were back then, right. 10 years later, 12 years later, to be honest with you. So we were very fortunate. And I think uh, our site, because of the expansibility that we have, that, that area, that we're pretty fortunate, even though it's within town close by. One thing we, we're not talking about tonight, but I will bring it to the future is, I mentioned this to David, once this is built, I want to do some improvements around the perimeter for visual effects, do new fencing, new landscaping, I mean, make it look nice, some signage. I have no intention of wanting to leave that chain link in that area. That's another good conversation, but that's not part of this budget process. So we'll do that in the future. If I may, Troy, um, you were hitting on the items and the electrical, it's just shy of a million dollars on this project. Mm -hmm. um, just an FYI for the board, Eckstein Electric, a Platteville contractor, did win the contract. Um, they were the low bid by um, between twenty and fifty thousand dollars over the other two electrical contractors that did the project. Um, I, I think that was very intentional. Eckstein had no intention of letting somebody else come in the Platteville <laughs> and do the electrical work. But I love the fact that they literally are on the south side of town and um, they're going to take pride in the fact that they're doing the project for us too. And they, they were one of only three qualified contractors that Moltz felt comfortable 
letting bid the project. So, and they will at some point in the near future be our contract electricians for work and do troubleshooting as needed. Um, yes, and they're already on call with us. On call, as as Mr. Evans is <coughs> telling me, he's not got time as much anymore. So. Um, now, Troy mentioned um, a sign, two, two things that I was supposed to find out from the board, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here real quick. Um, Moltz was asking whether we should put up a four by eight sign of some sort while the construction is going on. What's the board's pleasure on that? Do we want to advertise what it is? Do we wanna put something out there? Do we wanna just, um, assume that people realize we're building a new wastewater treatment plant on the existing facility what what is no, your there needs to be something out there i i agree i think and there if, needs to be and, a sign. and i'll just be blunt if we can get some type of uh like a visio elevation to print on it so they know what it's going to look like yeah. you know we need to really set those expectations because i mean <clears throat> it's easy to say you know go listen to the board meetings things like that people don't do that i mean let's be honest okay um but Put it out there outside of social media, a big, you know, like you said, piece of plywood, something, you know, okay. make it look nice. That way everybody knows what's going on when they're driving through town, they can see it. Um, I think it just, I think it'd be helpful. And yeah. it probably means a lot more to the people. Yeah. And, and, and I don't disagree with you. My next question would be do you think it'd be more effective to have it at our current entrance, or do you think it'd be more effective to have it at the new entrance? Put it right in the corner. I said the corner. Yeah. Right by the stop sign. I agree by okay. the stop sign. Yeah. If we do that without station. without blocking, yeah, yeah it, it, without blocking traffic views, I just think that that's, what, that think that's where all the traffic comes. Okay, you make it kind of two way, maybe. Yeah, double sign. Okay. okay, all right. And then the the next question um, that I was supposed to get feedback for them on is, does the board want to have some type of a groundbreaking ceremony out there for this, or do you just want to wait for the ribbon cutting when we get her done? I, I like the idea of the ribbon cutting. The ground, this one's really got me tied up in knots. And I don't know why. Um, I think groundbreaking is, it shows that we're proud of this, but it's not, you know, a pool or, you know, a record. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, Let's be honest. This that's 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 right. You know? Well, it's but, a water feature. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> you know, if but, something does break, who knows, it might. You know. Oh, Jeremiah. <laughs> but we are proud of it, and we, you know, staff has worked incredibly hard, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. And so I like that idea too. I don't know. What do you guys think? Anybody? Yeah, we don't need to go out with a little shovel and so the signage now, we're going to Okay. Yeah. Did you hear that, Simon? Yeah, I did. And just to be clear, also on the sign, you want to have uh, maybe like a, the three model of the building of what it's going to look like. I think is what I heard there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Something along the yeah of the building or kind of the it's site like, plan. It's like a visual or something that way people know what to expect. A pictures where the thousand words. Yep. 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 Agreed. Do we have a ground breaking day set up, or once we get all this approved? Yeah, we um. Right now, uh, the, the current plan is to get the notice of award finished tonight. We'll finish up the contract documents and the bonding and everything with Maltz and have that ready to go for a notice to proceed next week at the board meeting. Um, the loan closing is May 28th and Maltz is planning to be on site and probably start digging June 1st. So, okay. um, so go quick. In the mm -hmm. Like I said, the next three weeks are going to fly by. So that that's all I've got right now. Um, so I'll let Troy jump in with where where it's all going to come from. <laughs> uh, any other questions on the uh, the cost estimate? And I know it's a ninety percent design, but this is this is what we're going at the six point eight plus million dollars for the total project. So the, the next discussion item and part of this is how we're going to fund this project. Um, this is where I asked Kim and Dylan from 
Butler's another be part of this conversation. I previously mentioned that the uh, closing documents actually tonight, Mayor uh, Danette Mary have some signatures for that loan agreement for you to sign in advance, but they're dated May 28th. Uh, the board may recall the ordinance and the loan agreement was previously approved by you in the last month or so. And these are the subsequent signatures for that application for our loan. The loan is for $6.3 million. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, I don't want it to be $6.3 million, and I'll explain why. But that's what we're pre approved for, for uh, through our credit. So, so when you look at a $6.8 plus million dollar facility and $6.3 million dollar loan, obviously the numbers don't add up. But let me dive into that. Uh, I sent out, or actually under tables, a very basic memo that I just threw together. And I discussed this with, uh, I, went, I sent this also to Kim, and uh, Dylan's aware of it. And part of this conversation is we have an enterprise fund for wastewater and our water. And part of our previous conversation is if you add money outside the enterprise fund to, to pay a, a Project like a project like this, a funder project like this, you jeopardize your enterprise fund status. So I want to ask him or Dylan to explain that here in just a minute. But my proposal to the board is of the six six point eight million plus facility. We did qualify and we and we we're receiving an eight hundred thousand dollar dollar tier two grant um, that was Dave and I presented to the committee earlier this year. It's a uh, it's not a 50-50 grant, it's, a, it's a eight, basically an 85-15 grant. So they based that on, the presentation was a little over a $5 million facility. So what the Dola wants us to do is they'll give us 800000 but they want to make sure that we're spending what we need to to build this. Well, this is going to be a $6.8 million facility, so I'm not worried about making that match requirement. So that $800,000 will be, will be spent and reimbursed next two years, basically a year and a half. The grant is good through March 23. I'm going to give it to your cycle for that, uh, which gives us a little cushion that need be. And check with David Green. We have close to out almost $2 million in the reserve balance in our sewer fund alone. Talking to David, we don't want to drain that dry, so to speak. We want to have a cont contingency left in the bank, so to speak. So I'm looking at asking the board to apply $1 million of our reserves towards this project. And then, as far as enterprise fund status, if we apply over, I think it's eighty thousand dollars, then we're going to jeopardize the enterprise fund status for one year. But I'm asking the board to, of our three point one million dollars in reserve, unrestricted reserve, basically is earmarks, most earmarked for police station, public works, downtown revitalization, and there's about one point four million just in general fund cash, that's in call trust in the financial statements. So I'm not going to take away from any project, but I want to take that million dollars out of the general fund reserves as, as part of our general fund allotment as cash reserves only. And that would essentially knock down to just over a four million dollar loan out for a loan with the state on this project. One thing I did not include is JVA, one of the projects or the Actually, I'm that you will consider tonight is our next agreement with GDA for construction management during the next 14 months. That number is listed here. I don't believe we rolled that into the loan. We already have over 200,000 budgeted this year for additional engineering. We'll use that up and then budget some more for next year, but that should be something, in my opinion, we pay as we go. I don't think we should finance those engineering costs because I think we can afford to, to do it pay as we go. I'm not trying to cut you off. Did you say we weren't? I thought you you, well, you were going to do the construction again. You planned, that's why we didn't budget it, right? Isn't there a reason we didn't budget it? Like we said we were going to manage the construction of it. Is that a different project than crossing? I didn't want to manage the project. Okay. No. The engineer thing to oversee to make sure you that do. it's sure. being built for specs. And they will be involved, but there's not going to be that involved. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> sure. at the end of the day, JV was to make sure bolts built it to where it meets standard requirements at the end of the day. We need to be getting standard by December mm -hmm. next year. Yep. Okay, and so you went, you went through this, and maybe I didn't catch what you were talking about. You said that if we put public funds into our enterprise, we jeopardize it. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at putting another into 
Correct. Anything over 80,000. Okay, Kim, are you still online in Dillon? Oh, I am, yes. Okay. Kim, you and I talked offline, but could, could you explain more detail to the, the board about the enterprise fund and, and how jeopardizing it with the general fund money, how that impacts us in the future or currently? Sure. Um, let's go back to Tabor 101. Um, you, you all know and understand the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. Um, so that constitutional amendment was um, enacted specifically to restrain the growth of government. Um, so Tabor's got some provisions that require um, taxing and spending limits and have requirements for voting for any kind of, of debt. There are exceptions to Tabor for government-owned businesses which act as enterprises. And so what I'm going to be talking about are really Tabor enterprises, and they are different from your water and wastewater utility because you, you call them an enterprise for accounting purposes and things like that. Um, and it is that, but, but for Tabor, it's a little bit different. So in order for your, your utilities to still be enterprises for Tabor purposes, and what that means is that, that you don't that you can issue debt without an election, which is what you're going to be doing within this month. Um, you have to be um, you have to receive less than 10% of your annual revenue from state or local grant, and um, it, it's your annual revenue. So we think that that many entities do go in and out of Tabor staff or enterprise status each year depending upon how they operate and what they receive in grants and things like that. Um, the only time it would be a problem is if you wanted to issue debt without an election. So what I've talked to Troy about is um, in, in order to reduce your the cost of your borrowing, he wants to apply um, or utilize some other sources of revenue including state grants, DOLA grants, um, DOLA sometimes has um, federal grants, but usually they're state grants. Um, he wants to use some general fund money. Um, you can definitely use the sewer fund money because that's that is without without jeopardizing the enterprise status because that's part of the revenue that's generated by your and I put it quote your government owned business. But the money that you're going to get from the general fund or from state and local grants may jeopardize the enterprise status because it would be more than 10% of your revenue um, in, in the year in which you receive the grant. So um, I think the plan, and, and Troy can again um, kind of clarify this, but so when Dylan and I are gonna give an opinion at the end of the month that the town can issue these bonds with the Water and Power Development Authority without an election, we look back to what you did what you did and what you received and how your enterprise acted in 2020. And so that was not a problem. So what you received this year in grants and revenues, um, if it's more than 10% of your revenue, then in 2022, which is next year, if you wanted to do a borrowing next year without an election, whoever you asked to give that bond opinion would look back to 2021 and they'd say, you know, assuming it's us, we would say, you guys got these grants and you were not an enterprise in 2021, so we can't give you an opinion in 2022. However, in 2022, if you don't get any more grant money, then we go to 2023 and you want to borrow some money without an election, then we would look back again to what was happening in 2022 and make our determination on an annual basis. So I, I think the, the biggest downside um, for you as, and as the town of Platteville, um, Tabor, Tabor other has, has other spending limits, but you're, you have been debruced. So those limits don't apply to any of the grants that you're receiving. So it does not impact your ability to, to receive grants. So really it would affect if you wanted to borrow next year without an election. Um, Troy has assured me that there is no way you're gonna be borrowing money next year after you go through this this year. But you know, that's 
certainly can always change. Um, and if you, um, you would need to keep a 3% TABOR reserve. And what that would be is unrestricted fund balance that you could use in the event end of an emergency. So those are really the only issues that I see um, if you would not be an enterprise in, in any given year. And um, maybe Dylan, maybe you have some more thoughts on that or do you, does that about cover it? Yeah, I think I think that's a great summary. I think, you know, for from my perspective and, and Kim hit on it, we look to the past fiscal year, end of the end of your past year to determine your enterprise status for the current year. So it's always a look back period to the last fiscal year. So anytime you're trying to issue debt, it depends on what you did the last year. So it, it just impacts your future planning and your for budgeting purposes. Um, but you can definitely come back into enterprise status in the future, and this can then become available to you again. And I do want to clarify. I think if you know, I'm sorry. Well, I just want to clarify. I reached out to Dola and Chris LeMay and verified that our 800,000 funding for Dola are federal funds. They are not state funds. Okay, so um, so really it would just be the general fund money that you're going to be getting? Correct. Um, and I just don't remember off the top of my head what your annual annual revenues are, but I, I imagine that $1 million is probably more than 10%. <laughs> yes. Of our sort of, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is we, we receive in, in revenues about 800000 roughly in revenues and we in our sewer fund. That's why I mentioned the $80,000 number earlier. And let me be clear, this is a recommendation from me. My goal is to reduce the debt service, which will impact future rate increases for their citizens of Plavo. Not every entity looks at it this way, that the sewer fund will only fund sewer projects. No other money will be used. Um, we build up a pretty solid general fund. It's a gamble to some degree because number one, I can't guarantee we don't need a loan in two years for the sewer, but I'm hoping we don't or otherwise I'm not doing my job for about to spend six million dollars and loan that out, uh, borrow against it. But um, you know, it's just what your comfort level is. My comfort level is pretty good right now. It only affects loans, it doesn't affect grants. Yeah, if we wanted to go out for a loan, we would have to go to the vote of the people because we would not have enterprise fund status if we did this this year for one year. Right. But in 23, if we didn't jeopardize the 22, like Kim was saying, then we'd be back in enterprise fund status if need be. So that's my rationale behind the $1 million of the general fund. Again, I'm not wanting to take away from any other earmark projects by any means. I'm talking to David Green. Of this over $3.1 million, about half of that is sitting in a Colo Trust account, about $1.45 million. That's not earmarked for downtown revitalization, police department, public works facilities, and those kind of projects that we've talked Didn't about. Didn't we have funds earmarked for sewer? The, there's 500000 earmarked to Colo Trust, but that's part of the sewer fund. We just set that aside as, as, as a match several years ago. So we actually want to, I want to double that out the sewer fund. Okay, get a million so dollars. That's the, the million dollars part of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's already part of that million dollars from the sewer fund. And then the sewer fund and as of today, I verified the agreements the financial statements just came out for last month. Our balance in the reserves for the sewer fund is one point nine five two million dollars. I'm talking to David, we don't want to go below a half million or seven hundred thousand. I don't want to really go we could go more than that. But uh, I don't want to be too much of a gamble on the sewer fund right now. So that's where I'm asking for that. And then there's some best case scenario if, if the stars align where that contingency of 263000 if we don't use that, obviously we're not going to have to borrow that money because we're not going to spend it. And right now, there we have a small communities grant for water wastewater that's pending. It was going to be awarded on May 21st, but now it's been pushed back to June. Is that right, David? Middle to the end of June. Right? And we applied for 400,000. 
I'm not going to count on that, but if we did, you know, that would even reduce it even further. But I'm just throwing those out there. It could, best case scenario, be about $3.38 million loan if all of this lined up. I'm guessing it's going to be $4 million if you approve to use those funds from the general fund and the sewer fund. So, how do you, how do you plan to, because it, we're going to take out this loan and it's going to be drawn upon. Okay. As construction moves forward, do you plan on just paying the total construction from that loan and then paying down at the end the loan? That's not really my intent. Ken, could you help me with that question? On, on if we use the sewer, the million out of the sewer, million out of general, what would be the recommendation? Will we pay that money to, to pay most construction up until that money is used and then borrow against? Or use what's or you know I don't know if I'm saying it right, but basically you yeah. can take the loan or, or do do the loan first and then use that way to pay it down at the end of the day. Um, you know, I, I some of your grants might uh, well. So the water and power bill authority loan you have a set a set amount approved, and that is what is supposed to be used to start the project. Probably the safest way to do that is to. Um, to continue to borrow the full amount so that you can make sure you have enough because if it ends up that you that you don't and you have asked for a reduced amount then you might need to get a supplemental loan and then you wouldn't be able to because um because you've used some funds that that impact your grant and price status so um we can maybe get with the water and power development authority too if you're really comfortable using general fund money or if you decide that you want to do that that maybe you could reduce the amount that you borrow initially by a million dollars, or um, if if you want to um, use that sewer fund money, maybe you could reduce it, the loan by how much you borrowed by that much. I, th I think there are some restrictions on the Dola grant, so I think you can use it for this project, but I don't think you can use it to like pay down your loan, your water and power development authority loan. No. So if you and, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. So if you borrow $4 million and then you get this Dolan grant for $8 million, um, in some instances, they would let you pay down the loan. But I think, um, I don't remember exactly what the Dola, there is something with the Dola grants and loans, um, Dola grants, that I don't think they allow you to do that, but I can follow up with them tomorrow. Um, but you just need to be very comfortable with the amount that you're borrowing. And if you run into any contingencies or, or construction shortfalls that you're going to have enough to complete your project. Um, I guess occasionally we do run into that where, where um, towns do need to borrow a little bit more from the Water and Power Development Authority. And if you do it still within this year, um, you're still okay. But if you don't decide, if you don't find out until you know, January or February of next year that you need more money, um, then we would be looking back to this year for your enterprise status and that would be a problem. So it sounds like the safest thing to do is borrow the full 6.3, draw down as we go to pay off the construction, and obviously the construction is 6.8, but we would be applying some, some cash at some point. But if, at the end of the day, before we... I'm not sure how to word it, but... And right now we'll be making a partial payment in the next year. So when we go into 23, the project's done. Can we then apply toward as a down payment, basically the land from the general fund, so to speak, and have them recalculate our loan payments from then that point forward? I don't think they recalculate, but I do think they will pay it. Will will apply it to the end. So if you're paying. Ten thousand dollars or whatever it is, um, semi-annually, they're going to still make you pay that. They'll just not make you pay it for as long. Okay. So instead of the twenty-year loan, it'll be you know fifteen or whatever the, the one million buys it down to. But if we did just take what we needed minus the cash, then that would be recalculated for a lower annual payment then. Yeah, so how the loan agreement is, is set up is that you're allowed to prepay on the loan and then the Colorado Water and 
Northern Power Development Authority will work with you to recalculate your loan payment schedules or the, it'll re-amortize the schedule. So what it does is it, it makes payments first on any accrued interest that's due and then it reduces the outstanding principal amount and then they will re-amortize that balance. So it will effectively be um, more similar to using those funds, available funds to, to pay off the project, right? Um, the, the payment schedule, I, I believe Troy, um, I think the first payment's in November of 2022. So it, it does provide you some of that initial construction, initial um, drawdown to determine sort of what you're gonna use before you really need to determine if you need to pay anything down. And then if you use these other available cash to, to reduce the outstanding principal, then they'll re-amortize the, the loan and reduce the payment that way. So it seems like that would be the safest if there's any construction overruns or, or delays or any unforeseen costs where you would want that full amount of the, the CWR PDA loan if you do need to have some of this extra cash available for any, any unforeseen um, cost overruns. Okay, so at the end, by doing it that way, we would not be jeopardizing the enterprise fund status at all this year. It would potentially be again next year if that decision is made by the board to use those funds. Yeah, that, that's right. Because the our determination of, of your ability to issue the debt or take the loan this year is based on your grants received and your revenues of last year right. so you can't do anything this year your your decisions or anything to impact your enterprise status for this issuance but if you do make that decision it would impact your ability to issue debt in 2022. Okay. But, but if you're going to be using general fund money in 2022 to pay down this loan then in 2023 you couldn't issue um, debt without an election. Correct. Does that answer your question, Mark? Yeah, I mean, the DOLA grant, if we put, if we took the million out of our general fund, put it towards construction, then DOLA just, or the DOLA grant money just reimburses that, or we've already paid, so to speak. You know, we, the dollar grant is a, is a pure reimbursement. So we have to send them receipts on a, on a monthly basis that we pay MOLs for this project and then they'll reimburse versus essentially 15, 18% until that full 800,000 is used up. So essentially we have to- You can't, we have to, you can't reimburse the general fund. No, not, not, not yet. So at the end of the not day- that grant. Exactly. So at the end of the day, if we use general fund money, it needs to be at the very end of the project once at least most of it is are all constructed so so that wouldn't be an impact anytime soon that we can get next year but that's what we have them for to make sure that we spend it the right way so that we don't disqualify ourselves from being you know i mean you don't want to be, you don't want time if you got time this up correctly or else you put yourself in a pickle right so that's what that's what yeah. kim and bill are here for they're they're going to guide us through this process <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Well, I can't make you spend the money. I, I, I can't impact how you spend your money. Right. <laughs> no, but give us guidance on if we do it in certain ways, how that will impact us, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, okay. So no decision that needs to be made tonight, but those are some options I'm gonna throw to the board. I definitely think we should use a good chunk of that reserve in the, in the sewer fund of $2 million. That makes sense, because that's why that money's there. And a big part of that money is those investment fees we've put over the years, which really that's what that's for, is for growth and expansion. It's about a quarter of that, roughly. That's part of the money that we invested in that two-year bond. And the other is, is cash buildup. Uh, the sewer water fund, they're, they're not wealthy funds by any means, but they're not, you know, the, the intention is to offset these costs as the town grows and, and operate and build facilities. So. It's not to make money, so to speak, but um, but ultimately, and I don't know this answer. That's why we asked. Also asked uh, Andrew Ring. Andrew, are you on online with us tonight, Andrew? 
but part of it, at the end of the day, whatever our final loan amount is going to be, uh, there'll be a calculation that he does for us for the town because he did our financial analysis, and that will also impact what future rate increases in our in our water usage and base rates will need to be to make sure we have that debt service obligation that was a one thirty. They, they look for a one point three percent. Basically, the 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 Tabor is the one hundred and thirty percent of. I don't remember of what annual. Andrew, are you there at all? The rate study was based on like a five million dollar project total at that time, wasn't it? So five we, five. Five so five if five we five. did a four million dollar loan, then we wouldn't have to raise rates at all above what we already are. I, I would say we're at least looking at a two percent annual. Just the, just above what the annual. Exactly. Choice. But if we <laughs> if we if we took out and, and correct me if I'm wrong, David, I don't have numbers in front of me. But if we took out the full six point three million, you are looking at probably up to an eight percent increase for the next several years before we go back down to two sure. or three percent. So there's multiple spokes to the wheel, obviously. I want to reduce our debt service, but also want to reduce long term, you know, uh, increases towards our citizens as well. So it's a combination of both. So. That's my biggest driving factor in using general fund money is to help reduce this. Yes. Well, and the, the general fund money would also, by using that up front or right at the end of the project here, would not only reduce the debt service, but then that reduces the the interest paid. Sure. So that's easy. so then if we're reducing the interest paid, obviously we don't have to increase the rates to continue to cover that interest payment. And it's not this packet, but there's a, a payment schedule sheet that will go with uh, the final closing <coughs> and that six point three million dollars and it's is right at or over two point one million of that in thirty years will be interest alone. And just the idea is paying 2.1 million interest in the next 30 years in this community is not something I'm favorable of doing. Nobody is. So, paying for what we need to, absolutely. So, um, so another decision I have to make tonight, but that's something, that's one of my goals. You know, David oversees the van the car to make sure it works and looks pretty. And my job is to make sure we get it paid with help the board. More than looks pretty. <laughs> works efficiently. <laughs> Absolutely. Works very efficiently. <laughs> so those are my ideas. Kim or Dale, do you have anything to add on the enterprise? Thank you very much for explaining that in detail to the board because uh, I know I've never been through this process. I don't know if the board has or not. Mike may have years ago as previous involvement with the town, but I haven't been. So. Not to this extent, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, the only thing I think I would add um, that we've discussed is um, sort of in the in the coming years without knowing more or any sort of certainty to it, but with President Biden's plans, um, and if you do get any sort of grant from federal money, um, even if that's granted to the state, similar to the DOLA grant, if you can trace the funds back to the federal source then that would be deemed a federal grant and that would not necessarily that would not impact your enterprise status in the future but we can look at that in more detail once there's more certainty as to what's included what might be included and what's available to the town correct yesterday that announcement came out through the treasury u.s treasury department and the kind of platelet out allocation is still at roughly five hundred eleven thousand dollars half would be available this year half would be available next year that's how they, how they're they're proposing it through the recovery plan uh i know like Greeley's getting 20 million direct contribution denver's getting 166 million direct i mean i looked all that up today it's on the website if you want to look it up at the treasury department but it, it can't i don't know the details yet it's under final review but uh it can be used for for water wastewater and for, for some infrastructure items i just don't know the details yet if, it's, if they allow us to use it for that, they probably don't allow us to pay down the debt. Though. So we have to well, use it 
I would use it toward, you know, Dave and I have talked offline that we, we have a lot of pipe and, and system improvements that we need to do in this town for water wastewater. I wouldn't use that money or recommend using that money on this project because we we have some larger projects on the horizon. Uh, we have a three quarter million dollar project we've been talking about for a couple of years now to increase our water volume for tanks, replace those two six inch lines with a 12 or 14 inch line to increase our water pressure and our water volume. That could be a possible option for that money when the time comes. But right now I have no intention of recommending and, and spending on it. So. And as Mike just alluded to, the town has a lot of old both water and sewer lines elsewhere in the town that <coughs> need some mm -hmm. attention as well. Yeah, uh, there's an infrastructure bill coming through as well, so there might, there might still be some federal funds to... It, it's hard to predict. You know, Dale and I did talk to Dave a little bit online about, you know, how those funds could be impacted. It would be federal funding. Uh, that's why I reached out last couple weeks ago to, to Chris Lamey at Dola. Oh, that 15 million in, in that service tax money on the last grantification with Dola, two of that, two million of that pot was federal lease money. The rest was state, and we applied and received a portion of the federal pot of money, so that did not impact the enterprise fund just that alone. So that was helpful. So in a year from now, I mean the economy may be different. You know, the board at the time may say, you know what, we're not going to use any general fund money toward this, which is fine. I mean, you just, you have to look at what your payment's going to be, what your rate's going to be when the time comes. So, kind of throw everything out in consideration. So. Kim Dillon, do you yeah. have anything else to add? Go ahead, Kim. I will reach out to Ian at the Water and Power Development Authority and, and just kind of confirm, you know, make sure that, um, everything that we're talking about um, makes sense to them and that they don't have any issues with that as well. That'd be great. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on this item? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Why aren't we deciding to do this? When are we going? When are we going to? Do, and I understand the big announcement, tonight, but why? Why would it be not until next year? Well, Kim's going to verify with Ian, who is our contact with the state managing our loan. Uh, right now, we're we're going to close on a six point three million dollar loan. That's what we're being pre-qualified for. Right. So during the course of the next year, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kim, the recommendation is is we're going to draw down on that to pay for this project because. We want to make sure that we, if we need the full loan, we get the full loan. If we tell them the state will only want four million, then we're going to restrict that availability if we need it. So we're going to draw right. down on that full six point three. Right. What Kim's going to verify with Ian is that, that once the construction is done, if we want to apply the one million from the sewer, the one million from the general fund, we can then reduce the final payment amount, the final loan amount. Is that correct, Kim? Yeah, or maybe I'll ask him also if you can use your own money along the way okay. so that um, the amount that you actually end up borrowing from them is less. Definitely from the million from the sewer fund. I think that would definitely be an option. I wouldn't want to map out how we're paying for it until we're done figuring out how much it's going to cost either. That would make me nervous. So Kim's going to look at, just to clarify some options. For funding at the end of the day on the board for six point three million dollars. But uh, we don't know the final cost time, so what's right. the difference? Well, if we like if we were to agree with something like this and we were to make a motion and approve it, then we have no latitude. We can't change, we can't move. Am I mistaken? Yeah, I'm not asking the board to take any action right. on this this is a discussion point. Right. Sure. So I'm just concerned we the only my only hold up on this why I even asked about it is there, there may be a different board looking at this, and what if they? I just want to lock in the lowest possible loan amount. Like I like this plan; I think it's a great plan. What if a different board doesn't think this is a good plan, and they want to go with six million dollar debt service, and then the rates are going to go up ten percent? I guess that's what my concern is. That's why I'm asking this question. And I think we should decide to go with this if we can, because it's a, a very financially prudent plan for our citizens, in my opinion. I don't know how that locks us in, so to speak. I mean, because we're not obligating money now. Um, I have to talk to, to Kendra 
uh, on that question. If the board took action tonight, I'm not even saying tonight necessarily, but or in, in the near future that the, the town you, you take formal action that we will use one million general fund for this project. But if we don't use it right away, can a future board say no? We're not going to do that. I don't know that exact answer. I would say that another board can say no or not. Sure. I'll tell you probably. But it, that's the thing is we're not we're going to finalize the loan, but we're not going to actually be closing. We're going to be closed on May 28th, but we're not going to be paying it back for another year and a half. That's really where the big decision is going to be made. What that final payment is going to be. What this mapping looks like. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But Kim, if you once you find out some answers, would you uh, obviously get back with me and I'll pass it on oh. to the board? Of course. Okay. Of course. Okay, so we have cost overview and then some funding overview options. Uh, a year from now, our general fund may look a little different. We'll just, you know, but I want to throw it out there now that right now we're, we're pretty stable. Uh, we have a new business opening tomorrow, Caddy Corner across from Town Hall. I don't know how that's going to impact the town, hopefully for the, for the better. So, uh, and between now and then, some other retail, some other sales tax, some other revenue sources may come in too. Uh, worse uh, the flip side, you know, recession. So, the bad mm -hmm. word, we don't want to say that. So, but it's part of life. But those are our, our discussion items tonight. Uh, I don't have anything else to add, but we do have two action items to for the board to consider next. All right. Anything else? Kim and Dylan, thank you. Thank you guys thank you. very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Yes. Do you remember what when we did the sixty percent cost estimate? I'm sorry. Do you remember? Do you remember the, the, the cost estimate for the sixty percent? Was it like six point four? Well, yes, I believe you're right. It did not include any of the decommissioning, uh, and it didn't have a contingency. Uh, there you go. Yeah, those were just hard costs. Thank you, sir. Yep. Yeah. I started to sweat for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. Well, there's still some variables. I mean, are we going to use that tier 63,000 in contingency? I don't want to, but something may come up. That's, you know, and can we get that grant next month from small communities? I don't know. Or at least part of it. That's going to be helpful, too. Sure. So. But yes, that 60% number didn't include those two. There were several other smaller items that it didn't include either, but that those were the two big ones. Okay, moving on. The wastewater treatment fund notice of award and mold construction. Mr. Incan. Thank you. This uh, <clears throat> this is an aspect of the contract with most construction <laughs> Kendra Carberry, the town attorney, reviewed this and approved it for board consideration tonight. This notice of award. Uh, it's part of the reason why this went from a study session to a special meeting, so you can take action specifically on this prop, this action item. Moltz provided these cost estimates with uh, a disclaimer, basically that these costs only good for 30 days. Uh, costs are going up rapidly in construction. So by authorizing this notice of award to Moltz Construction, Moltz can then. We'll finish the, we'll finalize the contract which will come to you next week, next Tuesday, with Moltz. Uh, Kenner's finishing it up right now. <clears throat> this notice of award will allow them to contact their subs and lock those prices in. The notice to proceed next week will. That will, yeah, exactly. The notice of award will allow them to get their bonding and insurance in place yes, so that they can correct. sign the contract. That's yes, pretty correct. Thank you, David. Which is why we have this question. The CMAR process is the reason why we already approved, we already selected molds once, right? But because of the CMAR 9% design thing, that's why we have to go back and pre select them. Yeah, we, we've contracted them for a small fee to work with JVA to come up with, with these numbers. But they're not they're not approved to build anything without your right. approval, which is coming next Tuesday. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I take a motion, please. 
I move to approve the notice of award of Moltz Construction Incorporated as the amended and authorized the mayor to execute same. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Bennett. Uh, Trustee Ralston? Aye. Trustee Brandon? Aye. Brandon. Brandon? Okay, Brandon. I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Bloom? Aye. Trustee Overman? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Calper? Aye. Beautiful, thank you. All right, moving on to the wastewater treatment fund, letter of agreement for construction phase. Services. Did we did we move to there's an, an action it. for uh item A. It's a discussion. Move to accept nine percent? Yeah, it was a discussion. Okay. Yeah. I'm just making sure we're down there. Nope, we <coughs> do I appreciate it. All right, Mr. Rankin. Thank you. In conjunction, uh, excuse me, in conjunction with the notice of award and this which notice to proceed. JBA, this is their third and final phase, so to speak, of this project. They will assume all the construction management oversight for the for molds and work with David and the town. Uh, Simon, as you just talked spoke to earlier tonight, presented this agreement. Uh, this is actually, I think, agreement number four during this whole process the last couple of years. Um, he did a nice job summarizing what JBA shells do and responsible for and in a brief synopsis of the payment schedule. Uh, again, I, I mentioned a couple years ago talking to a former town engineer. I also talked to him about engineering cost and he said, you know, the, the standard rate regardless of what engineering firm you go to is, is right, right at about 10% of the total budget cost, which is what JBA is in line with. So this, the overall estimate was about 540000 which about half of that's been spent through prior contracts to do the 30 percent to 60 percent now this is uh, the remaining part that will complete the project so it's 10 percent of the construction cost typically it's 10 percent in general and that time it's more than the contractor huh? the engineer gets more than the construction company jeez <laughs> their their project management costs are in the four percent number for this part, but yes, the design and engineering, the whole package is somewhere between eight and 12 with 10% being the average. 10% is the average. And again, most gave us a very low construction cost number compared to some other contractors. So, but yeah, overall it's about 10% total. And when the project started, we're estimating about a $5.5 million facility. And that's why they came, you know, they were, they were about 500,000 total. And really, they, they did not increase their numbers, which surprised me a little bit. They, they did maintain their cost from two years ago. That's, that's I don't have a concern with that. They think we're not going to use a lumber. I'm asking the board to approve this agreement with JBA. Questions, comments, concerns? Take a motion, please. Move to approve the letter of agreement, a letter of agreement for construction phase services with JBA consultant engineers as presented and authorized mayor to execute the same. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Mary. Uh, Trustee Rad Radman. Radman. There you go. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> mayor Pro Tem Calper. Aye. Uh, Trustee Blum? Aye. Trustee Overman? Aye. Trustee Ralston? Aye. Perfect. Thank you guys. And is there anything else, Mr. Rankin? Just, uh, I just want to formally welcome Danette on. She started yesterday. Welcome. She, yeah, welcome. she types minutes up, minutes up as we go. So right. that's, uh, I'm not sure how she multitasks like that, but, <laughs> the, Mary has spent a lot of time with her, and uh, it's a learning process, as we all know it would be. But I did not submit a report tonight, it's a special meeting. The uh, packet will go out on Friday for next Tuesday's recommend. Go ahead. Yes. <coughs> all right. And then you guys know if you have any questions, please feel free to give Troy a call or David and, and get you all the information you guys need. Perfect. All right. Well, then, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.